Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I said I'd update you on the progress of the studio, and here it is. Now, as you can see from this image, the plaster has gone up. That was done by a mate of mine, Jim. He'd done a really good job on that. It wasn't easy. As you know, the walls were out. They were very uneven. He managed to get them to some level of decency. It took a week and a half to dry. As you know, you cannot paint on wet plaster. You're asking for trouble if you do that, so I just had to sit that out for a week and a half. There was a lot of moisture there, a lot of condensation, but eventually, leaving the windows open and leaving the door open, let some air flow through there, and it dried out. But it wasn't quick. It did take a week and a half for it to fully dry out. There's the finished article with the paint on there. Now I did try this with a spray gun, it was an absolute disaster. That is why you should not use cheap paint, but it went up. In this image also you can see some underlay there where the broom is, that's the royal gold underlay, that's the best underlay you can get, it's the 7mm stuff with a rubber compound on the top, very good for soundproofing, very good for comfort as well on underneath laminate flooring. There's the underlay been put down and there's the laminate flooring on there just acclimatising. That was left overnight just to get used to the temperature in there so it expanded to its correct size. The joints in the underlay are all taped up with insulation tape. That's to stop any damp or moisture coming through. There's the finished article. Mate of mine, Sedge, came round. He used to be a floor or used to do flooring years ago. He gave me a hand. We did that in less than a day. It went down relatively easy. There was a fair few cuts, but it went down quite easily, and I think the finished article looks really nice. I'm very pleased with that. The flooring was cheap, even though it's expensive flooring. It's the Chronotech stuff, which is really expensive quality flooring. I got that secondhand on Gumtree for just over £100, and as you can see, I'm well, I'm pleased with the results, but it's, to me, it does look like a top quality job. If you didn't know better, you'd think that was proper wood and flooring. Now, the electrics went in. No problems there at all. Three LED strip lights on there, which I think, personally, is a little bit of an overkill. It's very, very bright in there. What with the white walls and stuff like that, the light just bounces off them. So I'm not going to have any complaints about the room being too dark. There's also the plug sockets that have gone in as well. That's running off a 32 amp outlet. So as long as I don't run any tumble dryers, any cookers or any hair dryers in there, I should be okay. I'll just be running a computer, a couple of monitors, some speakers, some rack gear, 19 inch rack gear effects, etc. And a couple of guitar amps. Obviously they won't all be run at the same time, but I'm hoping I don't trip it all out with the electricity running. I don't think I should anyway. And there it is, a very brief overview of how the studio is looking at the moment. Rather than just have images being posted up and me talking over it, I decided to get out my phone, have a quick walk round and give you a better description. And here we have the finished article, well the almost finished article. So, the last update was plastering had been done and I had left that to dry out and that took around a week, just over a week. Believe it or not, it was very damp in here. I had to leave the window open quite a lot because it was just building up with condensation in here so the window is left open and it still took a week to do that was all done all dry so i painted it i tried using a spray gun absolute waste of time i bought this cheap paint it's leyland contract mat now i don't know whether you can see this on the wall the camera may not pick it up but can you see them lumps I tried using the spray gun, there's another one there, that's probably a little bit better, you can see that. It was an absolute nightmare. I went in a proper elf garnet mode with that, I almost took a hammer to the bloody spray gun. But it wasn't the spray gun, it was the paint that was full of cellulite, cellulite, cellulose, <laughs> cellulite. But it was, it was causing all sorts of problems, it would clog up the spray gun and in the end I just thought sod it I'll just 
get a roller to it. So yeah, that all got done. I used the same paint. Then I had the electrician come round. He finished all his bits. So what's happened here is he's put a he's put like a circuit breaker in here. That's just a, a humidity and temperature gauge on the top. I want to keep the temperature regulated in here. I'll get onto that in a bit. But he's put the sockets in. There is one down there. There is quite a few along here. This is where the desk is going to go when I eventually get one. I've set up the speakers already. The strip lights, these are LEDs. You will not believe how bright they are. Now I know I've got the the light coming in. I probably should have done this at night, but this will give you an idea. If I turn these on, this is absolutely blinding. You can see the flickering on there. That's not that's just the camera that's doing that. It's not flickering in in real life. So yeah, that is super bright. I shall never be in the dark there. Flooring. I've got a lot of gear in here, so that's all just going to be, that's put in here for storage now, but that's eventually all going to be set up. There's mics and compressors and rack gear and whatnot. There's a motorcycle battery in there that was used. I'll get onto that in a bit why I use that. But the flooring's here as well. That was bought second hand. Well, it was not, it's not actually second hand. It was unused from someone. Uh, it was quite expensive to buy new, but I got it for a bargain price. Um, just over a hundred quid and I had I've measured it all up and I had one strip left at the end of it which was really good measuring on my part I don't like to brag but I'm quite proud of that the skirting now here's something that was quite interesting the walls in this place are out I don't know whether I've told you but they are on the piss massively so I had to buy I couldn't buy wooden skirting I just knew that that wasn't going to work I don't know whether you can see it with all this gear but the wall along here, yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but the wall like, over here really deviates badly. There's a big sort of curve in there. How the bricklayer's done that, I do not know. They obviously didn't use a, a, a square when they were setting this out, but well, we, we are where we are now. So I had to use this plastic. It's like sort of PVC skirting board, but the good thing about it is it's flexible. So that allowed me to get round all the curves and uneven parts of the walls so that's worked out quite well that took I think it was 20 meters of it and stuck it on with no nails worked a treat I put there were some gaps at the top I've put mastic down there to try and fill it and give it a nice finish I don't know it's probably better if I'll show you over here so yeah it looks reasonably good not the best, but okay. There's going to be a desk in front and gear in front of all of it, so I'm not too fussed about it that much. And that worked out quite well. Funny thing was, the bloke came round a couple of weeks later with another 20 metres. They'd messed the order up and said, you've got another 20 metres. So I could have taken that for nothing, but me being the honest bod that I am, I decided to come clean and say, no, not for me. So that went back. Probably could have used it on the outside, but no, I, I, I thought I'd, I'd be do the right thing, as they say. So let's get on to the temperature that I was talking earlier. Right, so I did mention that there was a lot of condensation in here, and you're going to get that anywhere. And the trick is, believe it or not, with condensation is to keep the air cold, because where you have hot air, that will hold more moisture. So I've got this. So as you can see, that's 86% humidity at the moment. It certainly doesn't feel that way, but that doesn't lie. So that's well over, as you can see. And the temperature here is quite a temperate 17.9, nearly 18 degrees, which for me and for the equipment as well, is quite good. Now, I don't know whether any, that, that's got anything to do with the temperature outside, but that's where it is. I did invest in a dehumidifier here and I had it on at various intervals and I've emptied it once already it wasn't full it was about halfway but you can see how much water that's from about two or three nights that's how much humidity is in here so that's going to be a problem so I'm gonna to have to fit a vent at some point it's gonna to have to be a silent vent and I'm gonna 
probably put that in the door over here. Maybe that would be the easiest place to put it. And I'll just have that allowing fresh air, fresh cold air in, so as the temperature doesn't hold, well, the, the air doesn't hold too much moisture, causing the condensation. Now, I keep pointing back to this thing here. What is this? No, it's not a whiteboard. This is actually an infrared heater. And if you're unfamiliar with infrared heaters, they're really good. Now, obviously, you can see it runs off electricity. But what it does, it generates infrared beams, believe it or not, as you would see from your TV remote. This produces heat, and the heat that comes from this is very similar to the heat that comes from the sun. It, that's what it feels like. You can obviously feel quite a warm temperature as you come in, in, into the room, but what it does with these infrared rays, it will, it will not generate heat as in heat into the air. It will heat up the surrounding objects. So for example, everything around here, particularly the walls, that's why it's at head height. And you can feel, I mean, it's off now, but you could, when it was on, you could feel the walls were a lot warmer. And I could have done with that when I was trying to dry out the plaster, but obviously the electrics weren't here, so I couldn't do that. But they're really good and they're real, well worth the money, even if you're not into building a studio, but you want a cost effective way. And what with gas prices going up at the moment and all the energy companies going bust, if you get one of these, they're very, very cheap to run, very economical, and the heat is more, how can I put this, more efficient, shall we say. And it's also good if you've got uh, respiratory problems as well, because it doesn't generate or kick up any dust or any nasties that are in the air that are going to affect your breathing. It's just infrared beams, so there's no dust that's being created with this as well. And it all runs off a remote control, so it's fully configurable, and you can set your temperature. It's got a thermostat on there, and what it will do, if the temperature drops slightly, heater will kick in, and it will just maintain a constant temperature. It's off now because I've set the temperature to 18 degrees. If you looked on the temperature gauge over there, it's 17.9. It's also very clever as well. It can detect whether there is a window open, and if there's a window open, it will just shut itself off because there is obviously no point in trying to heat a room that has got a window open. So I'm really impressed with that. I've had it about three, four days. Now the temperature in here is quite constant. So that hasn't kicked in too many times, but sometimes during the evening I've come down here when it's been quite cold and that's kicked in and you can feel the heat as you walk in. Now, as I mentioned about the condensation and that, it's probably not the best thing if you're trying to get rid of condensation because warm air, warm air as I said, does hold the moisture better than cold air but if you're working in here you don't want to be working in a freezing cold room it's just going to distract you put you off and it's going to be quite uncomfortable so that's a good investment i'm well pleased with that that cost me 220 pounds i think that is 220 pounds well worth it so that's it more or less that's the interior done this is perfectly usable at the moment all that remains now, the next video will be when the studio is set up. I need to get a desk, which I've got one. I've got an eye on one, a second-hand one. Uh, that's going to go over there. There will be acoustic panels going around the wall, which will act... They will not act as soundproofing. These acoustic panels will act as a, a diffuser. So when I'm monitoring and mastering uh, record tracks... Record tracks, it's like an old git there, don't I? When I'm mastering tracks... I won't be bombarded with sound hitting off various surfaces. There's also going to be some bass traps in the corner as well to give me, just give me a proper, true sound of what the track will sound like. Now, I've got these Adam monitors. These are really good monitors. They're not cheap, I will say, but these are probably one of the best monitors on the market. Certainly one of the best makes of monitor that you can buy. And I'm I can't wait to try them out because... They've got such a good reputation. So, once everything is done, that will be it. I will put another video up and I'll show you exactly how the studio is working. There will be some reviews done from here. I'm going to try and limit the beer reviews because obviously bringing beer into a studio is not a good idea with all this electrical kit and the guitars and whatnot, but there will be a couple. I, I will definitely need to christen this place. But that's it. That's your lot. Like and subscribe when a puppy gets it. Isn't that right, Perse? Yeah, get off.